one thing professional designers know is that the floor plan is the foundation of a good design. It's the blueprint that helps you determine the size and the position of everything in the room. Without it, you can end up buying a lot of expensive, heavy, and hard to return things that don't fit your space properly. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a floor plan online using two free tools that anyone can use. These tools allow you to try out furniture in your space before you buy it without spending a dime or lifting anything heavy. By the end of this tutorial, you'll see the two apps I like to use and exactly the step-by-step -step process that I go through when I use one of these to share with a client. The app that I'm going to show you how to use first is called floorplanner.com and it's free up to a certain number of rooms. Go to, if you were starting from scratch, you would click create project. I've already named a project for this, pro for this video. When you click on it, it's going to bring you to this blue screen and I like to choose empty plan because that's the easiest one to work with. The first step is to draw the walls of your room and you just click on draw wall, plant your cursor somewhere on the drawing, and without clicking again, you make it as wide as your room is. And let's say you clicked there and you realized, oh, it's as soon as you click, it starts making the next wall. So I usually just draw four walls without stopping, even if I'm slightly off, and then I'll show you. Then if you want, to make this wall longer, you just wait to click on it until you see this blue dot. The blue dot is when you know you can change the length and the width or of the room as soon as you see the blue dot. So once you get your four walls to the right size that matches your room, you're going to want to place doors. I never use anything but a standard door because you can change the size of it and it doesn't matter what it looks like because you're only using this in 2D. So you drag your door onto the floor plan. Once you get it on there, you can flip the way the door opens or flip it into the room like that. You can also, because there's these three dots, you could change the size of the door if you had a door that was larger than three feet, two inches. But I'm gonna stick with a standard size door. Okay, then I want to add my second door, which is really just an opening. So I'm going to scroll down here until I see entry. That's just an opening in the wall. So I'm going to put that there. Then I want to go in and add some windows. So the windows, again, it doesn't matter that much what the window looks like or even how tall it is because I'm only using this in 2D. So I'll grab a standard window and if I want to change the size, I can do that once I see these three blue dots. You can also, if there's a window just like that, somewhere else on the wall, you can click the little duplicate button. Then there's also a window over here. So now you see how easy it is to drag these things around. Then if you have something like a fireplace or staircase in the room, it's under structures. And in this case, there is a fireplace. I'm gonna drag it over. And you can also change the dimensions of the fireplace by clicking on it once. Then you click settings. And then if my fireplace is 40, let's say it's 48 inches wide. No, I think I made that. Again, if I decide, oh, that's too big. I made that wrong. I just click on it again. Then I click settings. Um, it's 48 inches by 24 inches is my fireplace. So then I drag it back to the wall. Now I basically have the structure of my room. And the next thing I want to do is go over to objects. And this is where you put your furniture in the room and you can move it around. So you click on objects and I like to change my objects where I only see resizable images because again, it doesn't matter what color these things are Really, all that matters is the size because that's what I'm trying to figure out is what size items go in my room. So I only pick things that are scalable. So in this choice, in this case, let's say I want a sofa. 
I'm going to take that. Whoop, I do not want to see more. I want to see less. So I scroll down until I see a sofa that looks kind of like something that I would like for my room. And here we go. Here's a basic sofa. I click on it and I drag it over. Now that sofa, first of all, I want to turn it around where it's facing the fireplace, but that is not the size that I want. So I click on it once and because I've made chosen things that are resizable, I click settings. I think I want to try a, a 90 inch sofa that's only 36 inches deep. That to me looks much better for the size of my room. And now I'm going to Instead of the sofa, I'm going to choose some chairs, armchairs. So I'm going to choose this one, let's say, and I'm going to rotate it around so it's facing my seating area. And if I think that looks a little bit big, so I'm going to click on my, for my, I'm going to make it 32, I'm going to make it 36 inches. Okay, I could also just find a different chair that fits more with what I think I want for the room. And then I can also copy it. I, if I want two chairs, I'm gonna move my couch back a little bit and then I can fit two chairs in here. And then let's say that I want to try out different size rugs. So I would go over here and I would click all category and then I would click rugs. And again, it doesn't matter what the rug looks like. I really only care about the size. So this rug, once I click it in the room, I can rotate it like this. And once you move the rug, it puts it under the furniture for you. So this rug is actually a pretty good size for here, but if I wanted to change it, I would just click settings and I could change the length and width of the rug. So this helps you to see, okay, now, now I think I need a coffee table. Uh, so I'll click over here and I click all categories. I click coffee table, coffee table. Okay, let's say I'm, I think I want a round one. What does that look like in here? How does that fit? Then if I have a round coffee table, I really am gonna need a side table for these chairs, between the chairs, because they can't really reach the coffee table. So you can start to see how this works. And it's a really quick way to get an idea, especially of rugs and big pieces of how they fit in your space. The other app that I like to use that's free, and you can save this, but I also very frequently just take a screenshot of my item, but it will be saved in your dashboard. If you go back to your dashboard, you can see that there's the item I was just working on. And if I clicked on it again, it opens up and it's there. The other program that I like to use is Pottery Barns it has a similar app and it's free. It has a lot less flexibility, but if that one seems too complicated for you. So if you want to try Pottery Barn's free app, you scroll all the way down to the bottom of this website and you find Room Planner. And you do have to create an account, which doesn't really mean you have to pay for anything, but they can send you promotional emails and then you click start designing and it will make you create a login. I like to start with a blank plan. I've never, I like to start with a blank plan and I'm gonna call this one Betsy two because I've already done a Betsy. Create. So then it is going to start with a blank room. And for some reason, it always seems to make the room 14 by 20. But you can create different shapes of rooms. If I wanted to do one that was like this. I could get rid of this other one. And then I have a room that's oriented like this. If I want to make the room wider, I can grab the little. So this one's a little bit easier, but it's also less flexible. So 
let's say I had the dimensions of my walls in there, the next thing that you want to do is go back and add your windows and doors. So I can add a door here. If I click on the door, I can change the direction of the door and the way it swings, and I can duplicate it. Then once I have my doors, again, just like the other program, I'm going to want to go and add my windows. Once I have the window, I can click on it. And if I click on a window and I want to change the dimensions, I click on the item once and then I click this little dimension up here and I say, I don't want it to be three feet. I want it to be three feet, six inches. And it makes it wider. So I can duplicate that. I can put a window here. I can add another door, but you, there's only one, there's not as many kinds of doors. If I want, if that's too big of a door and I click on it once, I click dimensions and I say I only want it to be four feet. So then it makes the door smaller. Now, if I want to start adding products, you can add, it doesn't matter what the product looks like because you're really only wanting to see the dimensions. So you look for things, this one doesn't allow as much flexibility for changing the size. So you really have to find something that is close to what you want. But there are lots of different sizes. So in fact, you can filter by size. So let's say I want to filter by something that is uh, only 90, 87 inches. So you can filter by size, or you can just scroll down until you see something that is similar to the size that you want. So let's say I want to try out this sofa. I can drag it onto my plan. I can rotate it around. I can also add a fireplace here. It's in, it's possible the same way as the other program, but you just want to add all of the items into the room just so you can kind of see, oh, that rug is a what size is it that's way too small a five by eight and when i after i click away from the rug it will put it under the furniture but if i added some chairs in here i could see that let's let it add a couple of chairs in i want to use a round chair i want to use something smaller let's see i'm gonna i'm gonna put this chair in because it's a little bit smaller I'm going to put two of them. So now I can see, ooh, that rug is a little small for the room. So I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to add a bigger rug. And what this really helps you to do is to, to tell the scale of the things that you want to put in the room. So let's, in this case, let's try an 8 by 10. See, how does that look? Oh, okay. That starts to look like it fits the room a lot better. It's still, all the furniture can have the front legs on the rug, but I still have a clear path of travel. So then you just, I like to just play with the room until I get all of the furniture that I think I want in the space. And then I share it with my client. And sometimes they say, no, I don't like that arrangement. I want, I want it to be focused more around the television, or I want it to be not focused on the television at all. So you can play with the layout really easily if they said I don't like this chair like that I want it to be over here like this just really helps you to see what the layout can look like and these apps are both free so you should give them a try so you've seen how I've used these two free tools to test different layouts of furniture without having to lift anything or buy anything in my next video I'll show you how I use this floor plan to come up with the next two steps of the design process and you can see a previous example here. Remember, starting with a good floor plan is the first step to a good design. It can save you a whole lot of time, money, and heavy lifting.